How should I address you? Should I say, hello, good evening, future? Yeah, because that's what you are, the future. The future of this amazing generation that you are. And um, most of you who are sitting right now are Gen Zs, right? And uh, there is something very interesting about your generation. Because you were born roughly before and after the great 9-11 episode that happened in America. And then in 2008, historically, we had this, you know, when you were just in your, in your teenage years or just when you were entering childhood, you had the Great Recession. Not that you knew what was happening, but it must have impacted your family, your mom, your dad, somebody in the family. And also economically, whatever affects the whole country will also affect the smaller units like your family. And then just when things were going a little better, the recession has had receded and we were getting into boom time came the pandemic you know and this you must have heard very often your parents or your grandparents saying you tum kya jante ho hamare zamane mein aisa hua karta tha hamare ghar pe tv bhi nahi hua karta tha hamare paas mobile phone bhi nahi ye tum kya lage rehte ho and i think we should desist from doing this because i believe and i genuinely believe that every generation has its own advantages and its own disadvantages there are pros and cons for each generation let's talk about some of the things that are really amazing about this generation you are so well informed you have technology at your fingertips during my time whatever the teacher in the room came and told us was gospel truth we had no way to verify whether this teacher was really telling us the truth or the parents were telling us the truth today you have all the information on your fingertips so in, in many ways, you can actually get scientific information about anything on the planet and you don't necessarily have to depend on one source. More importantly, I feel as a generation also that you have been raised in a, in a generation where you have the concept of global warming, you have so many other elements that are coming to force that are making you understand the relevance or importance of sensitivity. And therefore, I feel the generation today is far more sensitive and far more uh, caring towards Earth and the climate change and many other issues that probably the previous generation just bypassed it. So I feel there is something amazingly special about your sensitivity which was lacking in the previous generation. Another important aspect of your, of your generation which can be an advantage and a disadvantage is that this generation is more fluid, is more open to ideas as opposed to our generation where we were told this is a boy, this is a girl, this is a fixed you know, notion of what things are and I'm not only talking about gender identity, I'm just talking about just being fixated in ideas. Okay, not, not dealing with sexuality or personality issues or identity issues, I'm just talking about being fixed about like for example, if I was a boy and when I was growing up, all that was, I was academically very brilliant. But what happened was, even though I scored 88 percentage, which now would constitute for 95 or 96 percentage way back in 1990, when I scored that in my 10th grade, the one thing that I actually wanted to, which I loved was history, psychology and the arts. But as a boy, that was not an option. That was not an option during my time. But today, your generation, I don't think your parents will, you know, bat an eyelid if you said, I want to take arts for boys. So I think there was a certain rigidity that we grew up with, which you don't have, which is amazing, which is really amazing because you are more fluid, you are more able to embrace who you are. So today I'm going to talk to you about, you know, what is my topic for today? In a nutshell, I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages or the challenges, let me not put it as disadvantages, the challenges of being a Gen Z. Moreover, I'm also going to talk about how social media is also influencing us and how amazing it is at the same time, how debilitating it could be. Yeah. And more importantly, and the lastly is what the topic, what we are here for and what has been spoken by the earlier speakers is about the spoken word and how the spoken word, you have to walk the talk. So these are in a rough in a rough uh, nutshell in the next 10 minutes because I've already taken five minutes away I'm going to talk to you and you know elaborate on these things so let's come back to the first one which is the basic advantages and the, you know uh, some of the things that probably we have to kind of deal with in this generation I've already spoke to you about the fact that today this generation is far more sensitive far more inclusive far more liberal and definitely they don't have fixed ideas of what it is and of course they have the advantage of having information at their fingertips now here is the thing 
this can also be a disadvantage why or a challenge because if you have one choice or two choice or three choice it's okay but when you have multiple choices what happens half the time is like this is also good this is also good think for example we are shopping something online you just don't know what to choose and how to choose because you have too many Whereas when we were back home, we just were taken to a shop and this was the best shop. You pick up one, two, three and it was easy. So sometimes a choice one, choice two, choice three is great. But if you have 50, 100 choices, it's debilitating because then you're unsure. So there's a certain sense of unsurety that comes in. Therefore, there's a, there's a paralysis of decision making and a delay in decision making. What could have taken just 10 minutes now takes two hours. The second challenge that we have is although we live in a world of social media and of course it validates so, my, so much of us but it's a virtual world and what happens is that we are now work, working in a culture where the likes matter and these are people that you don't know and from the likes the disadvantage part of it is one part is of course validation and it's an instant rush of dopamine that gets into your head like wow people love me and you're feeling great about it and these are people who could be nameless faceless and they may have ult ulterior motives and especially because you are young you be you would be problem you'd be probably preyed upon by certain people which will, which will have nefarious interest so you got to watch out as to who is giving you that validation and what is their intent and purpose because that could be sometimes you know a challenge especially because you're very young and you do not know what the other person on the other side what intent he has when they are befriending you so you have to be extremely careful and cautious and you know your parents didn't have uh, this social media so they don't know how to guide you you are more in-depth knowledge of what it is so they are unaware of what the pitfalls could be so now you will have to because you are this generation and maybe the generation that comes later after you you will be able to guide them on the pitfalls or how to save them but your generation doesn't have parents who have experience in this so you will have to smarten yourselves up and become aware of what dangers that could be out there lurking for you especially by strangers or certain people that may have you know a certain different intent and they might press on your you know a small nerve of yours where you're looking for validation where you're looking for somebody to appreciate you and love you because in a world of instagram where everybody is putting out their best foot forward and everybody's looking at you know how many likes you have or not likes you have it can be very nerve-wracking for a young child how unlike what it was in our times in our times it was just our school or gully ke andar jo bhi mashhoor tha wo mashhoor tha uske uske bahar itna zarurat nahi thi ki we need to get validation from the outside world so these are some of the challenges you have plus you know um it has become so easy to get this dopamine rush every day in the morning to check if my likes have been you know increasing or not there tends to be um you know a, a mismatch to the reality of what life is really about and this can be of major concern to many of you because you may be believe that you know these people just i i'm i'm good i probably am doing something which is maybe singing or dancing or doing some fashion and you may be getting around thousand two thousand likes depending on you know where you're strategically positioning yourself what music you're using or whatever it is on instagram that you know gives you those likes and then maybe in the real world you step out and you realize somebody criticizes you and you can't take it you can't it so you know that there, there is there is that that stress of you know oh but everybody loves me and why is this person being so negative i think shielding yourself from uh, a certain element of negativity and at the same time also seeing the reality of what it is is something that you will need to look into because this is something this 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 era has not come with a manual saying that baba aisa karo ya aisa karo your parents also don't have that manual you will have to create this manual as you go as to what works for you what doesn't work for you and become aware of what the issues are what are its advantages and what are its disadvantages there's nothing right or wrong in social media it's great in fact i feel as an artist it's the best thing because earlier you have to wait for a platform like a television show or a producer to find you or you have to go to an agent and today you can put yourself out there you don't have to wait till you're 20 30 40 whatever you're doing you can if it's good enough you can put it out there on your social media and who knows somebody might just pick it up at this time at this very moment so many young stars are getting discovered simply through social media isn't that an amazing thing it is so it's giving you a chance to express yourself and that is what it should be social media should also be about expression but 90 percent of the time what is happening it's not expression 90 percent of the time what you're doing is you're scrolling 
You are looking at the other person and saying how amazing it is. You are not putting what you should be saying. You are more interested in what the other person is doing better than you, or what, what, how is does do they have fancy clothes? Are they doing their you know reels properly? How many likes they're getting? So you are living in comparison, and this is dangerous. This was dangerous even in our generation. The comparison was always there. Comparison is not a new issue, but it is more so right now. Constant comparison, com constant evaluation. Earlier, we didn't know how amazing your life was unless you went out and said, "Yeah, mere saath bed, chai, coffee, pee," and we would discuss things. Today, you don't need to do that. You can just sit at home and show the best part of your life, and people will assume that that's the life you have. So there is a certain kind of a disillusionment that comes along with this. So you have to watch out for this. But I also have to tell you that, as I told you even before, that there are so many advantages of your generation. You are a generation that can express itself and don't have to wait for any platform. You don't have to wait for a producer to discover you. You don't have to wait for anybody else. You can put out there your talent out there. It could be in art, singing, writing, creatives. There are so many avenues for you, and this is the strength of your generation. And you should use it wisely. Having said that, I'm going to jump to the next topic about the spoken word. The spoken word is something that everybody, which is what we are here for today. How do we stand true to the spoken word? Sometimes the spoken word can lead to ego. Let's talk about saying. Let let me give you an example. Um, I was in in school. I was in then went to do science and I did microbiology, biochemistry. But before that, I was in college, and the ego was I'm a boy. I'm smart. I have scored, you know, so much in my PCB. I cannot take arts. I should be doing, you know, only science. I'm, I, I had the ego was riding so much high that it didn't listen to its own voice. So the ego is a wonderful thing because it gave, it shapes your identity, but it can also become very arrogant and not listen to what you really want. It can create this image about who you want to be, which may not be true to yourself. So being genuine. And being authentic is far more important sometimes. And telling, keeping your ego in check is super important because ego is a wonderful thing. It shapes your character. It gives you a definition of who you are. It shapes your identity. It tells you. It informs you as to what you can do, what you don't want to do. It shapes your likes and dislikes, and gives you a certain sense of pers of of you know grounding as to what you are and who you are and how different you are from other people. That is great. But the moment it goes into arrogance, the moment it goes into you know being cool, everybody is doing it. I should do it too. I'm going to speak like this. And sometimes you say certain. Things and you realize you can't live up to it. So being realistic is super important, and understanding that your words matter is even more important. Now coming to the next part, if you have said that I am going, I am so and so, and I want to be so and so, and if you don't live up to that, then comes the next pressure. Hurry, everybody knows. I put it on social media that I am this, 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 or I want this, 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 and now it's not happening. Then comes the guilt and the shame. And then comes the bullying. Oh, you didn't say that. What happened? And then comes this feeling of, you know, I think I'm not good enough. So you got to watch out that you need to embrace your humanity, which means as much as you can, you know, make um, an affirmation or you can say that this is who I am. Learn to realize that you are human and you are getting constantly informed of your choices constantly. So you are free to change that. And be humble enough to accept that this is what I said few days ago. But now I think and feel different, and I have embraced certain aspects of my reality. Remember one thing: the day you embrace your vulnerability will be the day that you conquer yourself and you will own who you are. And then nobody else will be able to kind of you know affect you the way people who hide and guard themselves. So rather than boasting, rather than saying I am this and that. And then being afraid that you won't live up to those expectations, think of it this way: that this is what you'd like to be, this is who you want to be, but there could be a mid-course correction where you will realize maybe this is what I thought then, but now, you know, I'm different. I'm thinking differently, and that is very important to constantly shape and inform your decision-making processes so that you know that you know what you had said earlier. May change. So keeping that room for margin, keeping that room for authenticity, keeping that room for correction, keeping that room for failure is super important. Also remember that, as as I said earlier, that um, you know the word walk the talk. Yes, you should walk the talk because when 
when you say something to yourself, more than telling it out to the public, just ask yourself, why do you say what you're, what you're saying? Before even you put it out to your parents, before you put it out to anybody else, ask yourself, why do you say what you say? What is the reason why you're saying this? Sit with yourself, contemplate. The biggest, most important thing that this generation can learn is just being meditative and contemplative, which means you need to sit with yourself and discuss why are you saying this? Is this ego ridden? Is this because your mother or father or friend said something? That is why it's like a revenge thing. Like for example, weight loss. Some people say, you know, mujhe ye bola tha. now I'm going to show this person, you know, what it is. Or somebody is in a relationship, which will happen in your, in your, in, in, because you're like slowly going to go into your teenage and then you're going to become adults. And then the one of your partner says, oh, you're not good enough. And then to show that, you know, you prove. You know, these are um, very harmful ways of correcting yourself. Do it because you love yourself. Do it because it's constructive criticism. Do it because it's a healthy way to do things. Don't do it with another reason which may not be healthy for you. So understanding why you make those statements, understanding what is the reason behind those statements is super important because otherwise you could be very bitter about what you just said and it may not be the truth of who you are and you may suffer for it. Sometimes people live up to certain ideals that they have spoken and they're so unhappy about it. You know, they have this image about themselves and they work so hard, but they, they're not very happy with that image that they have you know, created for themselves. And because they have said like Salman, Jo Mene, what was that line? Commitment Kardi. It's a great line. I mean, it's great to follow through your commitments and follow your words. But you know, uh, becoming arrogant about it is a problem. Don't be arrogant about it. Okay. Yes, you need to have commitment. Yes, you need to kind of have integrity, very important integrity. And that is why you need to ask yourself, why are you making this statement? Why is this statement so important to you? You know, what is its precursor? And these will inform you and shape you and give you reason why you should stay on the path. Yeah, so with these little few things that I've shared with you, I hope this can really shape the generation of tomorrow. And do believe in yourself that your generation has the best of many worlds and you, the worst is already over. Okay, the worst things have already happened in your generation and you have seen much more disasters and cataclysmic events. So the future will definitely look bright simply because you're coming from a space which is not privileged, especially economically, with jobs not being around, with so many things that may not be available to you. So you are going to create a new market. And every time I believe that there is a lull or there's a drop, I always feel there is a new market that is going to come in and you know, be created by this generation. And I feel it's the death of one and you know, the birth of another. So welcome to a new world.